This is so ridiculously simple, but so very helpful. As an artist, if you don't know your own personal voice and style, it can be hard to know where to focus your energies. Without focus, your work will be scattered instead of distinctive. Today I'm going to show a simple exercise to discover your personal artistic voice. Hey there, Sandy here. Welcome to another creative video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. We're going to start considering shapes. What shapes are the ones that you are most attracted to? Are they squares or diamonds? Circles or ovals? Perhaps triangles or hexagons? Hearts or leaves? Do they have straight edges or are they curved? Here's a simple activity to determine which shapes to start with. Even if you don't normally draw or don't think you draw well, you can do this exercise. If you're not much of a drawer like me, you can still find it relaxing to let your mind flow with paper and pencil. And the bonus is the more you do it, the better and more confident you get. The best way to do this is to actually keep your mind occupied while you sketch. Put on something you can listen to, like a lecture, a sermon, a podcast, or an audiobook. I don't necessarily recommend music unless you intend to focus carefully on the words. As you are listening, simply pick up your pencil, get yourself a notebook. If it's a cool one that you really like, that's great. Or you can just use a plain sheet of paper. Pick up your pencil. Put it to paper and let it do whatever you feel like. I can guarantee you any sketch I do is going to start with a curved line. It just is me. Whenever I do something straight edged, I'm like, eh. If you are stuck for where to start, simply look around the room. Pick out a shape that catches your eye and start with that. We're not trying to draw objects here just shapes. You can sketch, you can make deliberate lines, you can fill in your shapes with more shapes. The key here is to not overthink it. Simply do what you feel like with no expectations of whether it'll be good or not. Here's a page from a recent sketching session of mine. The designs I find most pleasing on these pages are ones that occurred when I simply let my pencil flow and didn't overthink it. When I tried to get too representational, like with the tassel from a necklace I was wearing at the time, or one of the flowers that was in a vase in the room, the designs came out stiff and unattractive. The shape and design I'm most pleased with is in the lower left. While my pencil was drawing this one, I was listening intently to the message. It wasn't until I finished that I took a look at what I had done and said, Oh, I like that one. Now, of course, this is not the only way to draw. Many people draw quite deliberately and with great intent. But if it's not your strong point, like it isn't mine, I find this to be a very effective exercise. Once you've sketched several shapes or designs, make a few copies of the page. Make copies that are larger and smaller than your original as well. So here I've got a few copies. Then use scissors and cut out all of your shapes. Lay them all out on an empty work table in front of you and start playing with them. Arrange them, overlap them, flip some over so you have the reversed shape. If you have a picture in your mind of what you want, that's fine. And if you don't, that's fine too. Just start playing. That's kind of interesting. Eventually, you'll find yourself eliminating shapes that you really don't care for. I whittled mine down to just a few fairly similar shapes, but you can save all of your leftover shapes for play later on. If you've ever seen those tanagrams, it's a similar kind of process where you just have a pile of shapes and you just start playing and see what you can build with them. Your next step will be to choose a color scheme and mix polymer clay in those shades. I'm using Cernit Translucent Clay and tinting it with paints and alcohol inks, but you can do anything you like. I just liked the idea of overlapping my shapes and the translucency showing through. 
if you go this route, I will provide the recipes for the colors that I came up with, but if you don't use the exact things I used, you'll want to do some testing. You can see here the raw clay with my baked samples, and you can see why it's so important to do baking tests. These colors I could have pretty much guessed, although this purple turned out a lot more red than the sample, but these who would have guessed that they would have come out like this, so you really do need to do testing. Since I wanted my translucent clay to be very thin, and I planned to have several layers in each piece, I rolled my clay out on the thinnest setting of my atlas. You could simply sculpt your clay into these shapes. You don't have to just roll slabs and cut them out. You can use this any way you want. Now you can add surface treatments to your sheets of clay. I recommend using restraint here. If you have too many things going on, it will be hard for them to work together harmoniously. Since silk screening and applying paint through stencils are quick and easy, I did that on four of my five sheets of clay. I stuck with just white and copper paint for my silk screening and stenciling. I did that on four of the five sheets of clay, and on the fifth one, the purple one, I used this roller tool to make a texture. If you used paint as your surface design, once that's dry, you can grab your templates and start cutting out as many shapes. By the way, I used about a quarter of an ounce of clay for each of my colors. You can just start arranging as many shapes as you can on your clay. Don't forget to flip some of them over so you end up with a reversed image. Just use a craft knife and cut them out and you can edit the shapes so if maybe you're short a little bit of space you can always edit the shape a little with your craft knife. Put them on a piece of paper to bake. If you leave it on the tile to bake the problem with that is that the back will be shiny and if you don't want to do an additional finish on the back then put them on paper. So this one I kind of lost the point. What's the point? Where's the point? <laughs> Come on, you. There. Then you can bake all of your pieces at the manufacturer's recommended temperature for 30 to 45 minutes. I always bake a little long for these kinds of things to be certain they are completely cured and flexible. If you're the kind of person who wants to learn more than just projects, but longs to grow as an artist, consider becoming a patron. You'll not only support this channel, but you'll get weekly behind the scenes and sneak peeks into my creative process. Join us. Find all the details at patreon.com slash And back to your video. Once your cured pieces come out of the oven, it's time to do even more playing. Just as with your paper pieces, rearrange and arrange, overlap, flip around, you'll get the back side so you won't have the busy pattern and you'll have a reverse pattern. Try all different kinds of arrangements until you find a composition that you like. My thought for these shapes initially was to have the look of a deconstructed wing. But keep playing. If you find something you think you like, grab your phone, snap a photo, and then continue playing. Another way to discover your artistic voice isn't a quick trick, but more of a way of life. Commit to making art regularly. If you get in consistent play, practice, and experimentation, your own style is sure to emerge. Look at the pieces you've made today with this exercise, noting similarities, differences, what you like and what you don't. If you've been doing art for a while, sometimes it's hard to see our own style, so it's not a bad idea to gather a collection together and ask other folks to take a look at it and tell you what they see, what they think your style is. You might find their answers surprising. Now you've got a better handle on your personal artistic style, but you need to put it into practice. Try choosing one of these mixed media materials and then go create something amazing.